everybody. Welcome to Organic Healthy Lifestyle, and I'm Nancy Addison, and I'm here with Dr. Bill McGraw, and he wrote a book called Mercury, the Ultimate Truth in Chronic Disease, which I have read, and it is excellent information. I highly recommend it. And a lot of people don't realize that they have mercury toxicity in their body. And this is important information for people to know. And so Dr. McGraw is gonna share with us today uh, information that he has acquired through years of research. And some of it is uh, new research since he published his book. So um, welcome, to, welcome to my show. Dr. McGraw, and uh, please, um, just, um, I'd love for you to address the terpenes in the plants and how mm -hmm. the 5G is mm -hmm. starting a lot of these forest fires, because I know that that is something that a lot of people have been concerned about, the 5G, and how mm -hmm. it can prevent our body from uptaking the oxygen molecules into our hemoglobin, mm -hmm. but I don't think they may be aware of how it's also affecting our environment, the birds, mm -hmm. the plants, and how it can, can cause so much harm to our planet. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me, Nancy, first off. And uh, yeah, there's just so much information that I've covered over the past probably two weeks. It's uh, a phenomenal amount of information. So I'm going to try to get through as much as I can. First off with the uh, turpins, which is just a compound that a plant normally makes as sort of an insecticide. It prevents insects from eating the plant. It forms these turpins. Well, the turpins are highly volatile and inflammatory, uh, uh, flammable, I was going to say. And so uh, the more turpins that a plant has, the faster it will burn and the quicker it will catch on fire. And so with 5G and also 4G, uh, from cell phones, the radiation creates a higher amount of turpins in plants. And so this creates a, a situation where the plants will burn uh, faster and more readily. So uh, 5G uh, definitely contributes to uh, the wildfires of California without a doubt. So that's, that's basically what's going on with 5G uh, in a nutshell. You can see the, the videos I put up on, on YouTube in regards to the more information for that. But there's a picture of my book and I'm gonna move through some slides now to talk more about what's going on with the rest of the world in terms of mercury. There's so much information to cover. Uh, let's see, can we move on here to the next one? There we go. Okay, first, uh, this is a picture obviously of the planet Earth and the map indicates the shaded areas are uh, the Mercuriferous Belt. And the Mercuriferous Belt is simply areas where you're gonna find more mercury in the Earth's crust than the rest of the planet. And so you'll, go, you'll see it cuts right through California and it goes right through China. And these are uh, areas where they have mercury mines. Also Almaden mine here in Spain was the biggest mine ever, mercury mine ever. And it produced uh, most of the mercury uh, that was shipped across over here and then used in South America and uh, even Central America to amalgamate gold and bring it back to the mighty Spanish Empire. And so you'll see the new Almaden mine here in California around San Francisco Bay. There is just one of the biggest amounts of mercury in the environment ever. And what happens, uh, well, what happened with the, what's currently happening with the forests that are catching on fire, it's releasing all of that mercury back into the atmosphere. Okay, so that is the mercuriferous belt, areas where you're gonna find a lot more uh, mercury than other areas in the Earth's crust. And it just mirrors the, what we call the, the ring of fire. And this is where you get volcanic and earthquake activity as well. Okay, so this, this is probably one of the most interesting graphs I've ever seen on mercury. And this data comes from an ice core in Wyoming, in a glacier. And the year, what they've done is, first off is just drill into the ice, into the glacier and pull out a huge core and then identify where the mercury concentrations are in relation to the year. And so we'll start with the year 1700 and go all the way up to the, almost the present time of 2000. And what they've identified is periods of time when there was just a huge amount of mercury put into the atmosphere that settled in this, in this glacier core that they measured. And one of the biggest ones you'll see is the gold rush of California, 1849 to 1884. And it, 
it is the second biggest input of mercury into the environment over the planet. And this is just a period of 30 years, roughly. And geez, look at the size of it. It's like uh, more, well over 4,500 uh, metric tons of mercury, just from one of the pieces of data that I've acquired. The second biggest is going to be from the Industrial Revolution. This is primarily through Asia. Because at this point in time, as we head closer to the 90s and 2000s, we had already given up, obviously, even after 1970, we'd given up mercury mining and we'd given up mercury using it in gold, uh, artisanal mining and so on. But in Asia, Philippines, places like that, uh, there's still a ton of mercury being dumped in the environment from industry, especially China. China is by far the biggest offender of mercury into the environment. And there's other graphs you can look at on my website. It's, it's just ins an insane amount. And that's through industry and artisanal mining. So those are the two Two things I want to show on this graph, the gold rush of California, and then the, the well, there's a gold rush going on now all over the planet, and we're going to take a look at some of those numbers as well, but, uh, you know, predominantly around uh, 1950 to 2000 is when really things, and of course, if you want to get a gold rush going on, what do you do? Just raise the price of gold to $2,000 an ounce, and everybody's going to be running out there with their pans and their mercury, and amalgamating gold in the pan, burn off the mercury, just put it over a fire, burn off the mercury, and you're left with the gold, and then you go to town and party just like they do in the movies, right? Well, okay, this, now sorry? Rain for us to a great extent, aren't they? Uh, yes, uh, I, don't, I don't really have a slide of that, but I did cover it in one of my uh, videos. What's happening now is that about 20% of the total indigenous area of the Amazon rainforest is being used for gold mining. And what these indigenous people do is, well, what they did in, in 1849. They pan, get out there with the pan, you move the sediments around. If you see some gold, you pour in your mercury into the pan, you amalgamate, because that mercury will just absorb the gold. And when you get enough, well, what is enough? You know, hopefully at least 50% gold. Then you burn off your mercury over a fire. You know, put the pan in a fire, burn off your mercury, and then take your gold to town and, and, and get your money. And somebody's paying for the, those people to do that. And so, you know, 20% of the indigenous area of the Amazon rainforest is absolutely destroyed. And it will take more than decades uh, for that to recover. And some areas will never recover because mercury stays in the environment forever. It's attached to sulfur on proteins and it just gets passed around from one food chain to the other. And if you get a fish and eat the fish, well, uh, the remains, you excrete the mercury out into the environment, it stays there. It just attaches to more protein, more, more sulfur, and then something else eats it, and then it gets recycled, and something else eats it, and it just goes around and around and stays there, well, basically forever. Now, let's go back 300 years. Okay, there were two... With you, um, can you tell people kind of how you found out about this, your, a little bit of your journey? There may be some people that don't know your story mm -hmm. on how, how you sure. discovered that there's a lot of mercury oh. toxicity in people, and okay. then also some of the, the three stages that you can, that the effects of having mercury toxicity in your body. Yeah, I've, I've actually got a list of um, mercury, symptoms of mercury toxicity, which is a little bit different, but I'm going to connect some other points as well. But the three stages are very, are very typical of, of the symptoms I'm going to present anyway. So my story, oh boy, we're going back um, 15 years. I started uh, developing insomnia. And so I went to about 10 different doctors, including naturopaths in three different countries, and they gave me drugs. And they hooked me up to machines and they couldn't tell me what was going on. And I had ionic foot baths and I had all kinds of beeping machines and, uh, you know, everything, everything. And I just kept getting more drugs and more herbal supplements and nothing helped. And I kept going back to these doctors telling them, look, I just have insomnia. Can you help me with that? And they said, well, it's, uh, we don't know. We don't know what's going on. So uh, basically I got sick of it. One doctor just gave me a prescription for benzodiazepine and said, look, I don't want to ever see you again. Don't come back here. So I picked it up myself. I got sick of it, uh, putting up with all that. And uh, I started reading thousands and thousands of research papers. Not one single one of these doctors actually tested you for mercury. No, not, they didn't even mention it, even off the cuff saying, hey, by the way, do you ever think about mercury? You're on the way out the door. Ah, look at mercury. Never, never once. And after reading thousands of papers and hundreds of books, I figured out, well, no, this is a, a mineral deficiency of uh, potassium magnesium that's causing this insomnia and in which the, the insomnia later turned into anxiety. I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning, like I feel like I'm dying. And I just got freaked out and I had to figure out what was going on. And so I did. And it was a, a mineral deficiency. As soon as I started supplementing with minerals, in particular, uh, magnesium and potassium, 
uh, my anxiety completely went away and then my insomnia improved. And, and then I had to figure out, well, I wasn't always mineral deficient. What happened? And that's, of course, uh, mercury. Mercury got into my body and prevented the absorption, utilization, and transfer of these minerals. And I couldn't absorb them. So I had to take a lot of extra of them, and, and it solved my problem. And so then I went, had to go back and say, well, where the heck did this mercury come from? Well, I had 10 mercury amalgam fillings. And then I had 12 vaccines before I went to South Africa to work for four years. And I was eating a lot of carnivorous fish. Well, the carnivorous fish in and of itself, eating it every day is enough to make your mercury toxic enough to kill you. And you can look up my video on Gen my Monet, who's a famous singer, who had got very sick from mercury eating carnivorous fish every day. And there's other actors that also had the problem. And, and uh, patients of Dr. Jane Hightower in San Francisco had the same problem. She had to figure it out too. How did these people get sick? Why are they losing their hair? Why do they have headaches and fatigue and, and all that? And so she figured out, yeah, they're eating too much fish. So fish by itself can be enough. But I had the triple whammy. I had the, vi uh, the vaccines. I had... Um, I was eating a lot of carnivorous fish and I had um, mercury amalgam fillings and I, I, I wasn't eating well. I was working 16 hours a day and that just was enough to, to cause the insomnia. And then it was years before I could actually fix my problem. And then, uh, you know, I said, well, what am I going to do with this information, but write a book and, and put out the information to try to help people figure out what's going on and maybe pre prevent uh, what happened to me from uh, to happening to other people. And that's what happened there. Well, and so many people, think eating fish is healthy for them and they don't realize how much mercury is in a lot of those fish that they're eating. Right. And then also right. now the light bulbs that they've created, uh, <laughs> they put yeah. off the mercury vapor that I think is even more dangerous. And so, you know, right. a lot of public buildings or places where you go right. um, are, are poisoning us. Right. And, and then now with this 5G and everything it's just um it's really uh, complicated but yet mm -hmm. you have some solutions for people so i want everybody to know there are some solutions that dr mcgraw has has found out that can help you to help get the mercury out of your body but since uh, it's kind of an ongoing way because of these light bulbs and different things that we're exposed to you know you may have to do this on a continual basis Right. Absolutely. There's a constant and continual input of mercury into your body. You know, thanks to the forest fires, 4 million acres burning. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the light bulbs, absolutely. The fluorescent light bulbs uh, contain mercury. And if you break them, yeah, that mercury gas is going to be discharged and you're going to breathe it in. It goes going to go straight into your blood system, through the lungs, straight into your brain. Once it's inside your brain, past the blood brain barrier, it turns into an ionic form and gets trapped there. And then we're going to actually look at some uh, rates of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and how they're increasing over over time. Uh, we can go back. Uh, geez, and how do you get rid of it? Well, I don't necessarily have slides for that. I didn't know how much time we'd have today, but that's easy. I don't need a slide for it. I can tell you that regular sweat therapy, whether it be an infrared sauna or just sweating, I have some one client that goes out to her car and sits in her car with the heat on in Panama and she, you're going to sweat. Just go down into Panama lowlands and you're going to sweat and that's good. Infrared saunas are good. So sweat therapy, you're getting rid of all the toxins in your body and that's why they call the skin the third kidney and that's good. And next you could use uh, intestinal binders, chlorella, spirulina, activated carbon. These will all bind mercury in your body, not necessarily pull it out of the tissues, but if it's circulating through your body and you're eating mercury uh, in one form or another, such as fish, it will certainly bind to it and, and you'll pass it out with regular gastrointestinal tract every day. Um, no, and it's so activated carbon, the same as activated charcoal? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's right. It's just ground carbon uh, that basically has spaces within the pores of the substance and it traps toxins. It traps the toxins. So, you know, they give that to you no matter what. It absorbs all kinds of toxins. Uh, and so that's one of the ways. So you're taking binders and there's other binders, fibrous binder, uh, you know, or fruit has binders. Um, you know, anything that has any natural fiber is a binder for mercury. And what so the third way, for? sorry. Sorry? Have you learned, have, do you use zeolite? Is yeah. zeolite one of those binders? Yeah, absolutely. Zeolite is a great binder. Clays are binders. If you get a, a good clay. Clay? Yes. 
Absolutely, it will bind metals. Now it also binds some good metals, zinc and copper and, and, and so on. And so you'd have to make sure that you supplement with minerals. And if you're mercury toxic, you're already doing that anyway. And so, yeah, absolutely. You want to uh, bind uh, those things. And just the third way is increased glutathione. Now, Dr. Chris Shade, you'll find him on the YouTube, is an absolute master of this. And it's just increasing antioxidants in your diet, such as vitamin C, which will increase the glutathione production in your body and upregulate it is like what he likes likes to say. And that's just basically causing your genes to produce more glutathione in the body and the glutathione will chelate the, the, the mercury naturally in your body, pass it through the liver and the gallbladder, attach it to carrier proteins and fats. That's why it's good uh, to get the right fats in your diet. You know, you can go avocado or coconut oil or any of those and it will attach, but animal proteins are better. I know you're not an advocate of that. And so it'll get attached to those things and pass it out through gastrointestinal tract where 80% of the mercury is supposed to go. So those are the three ways. You're talking sweat therapy, you're talking intestinal binders, you're talking antioxidants such as vitamin C, which include uh, increase the glutathione which is the body's natural chelator. And once you start using these different therapies, the body goes from sequestering mercury in the tissues to the detox mode, and you'll start dumping mercury like crazy. You may feel more tired. Things get worse before they get better, but it's a regular everyday thing that you're going to do. It's not something, well, I just go into a week-long thing and get chelation therapy through intravenous. Ah, you know, that's going to make you sick because it dumps so much mercury into your blood, pulls it out of the tissues, that what happens is it redistributes and it lets Let's go. Some of the chelators let go of the mercury. They redistribute, get repacked into your tissues and make you really sick. So it's best to do it slow. It's a marathon, not a race. So that's my bit on getting rid of mercury. And that's what I tell for my clients that I have here. I work as a naturopathic doctor here in, in Panama and I help people detox from mercury. And we use hair analysis to tell if you're mercury toxic. I've got a couple of videos on that as well. Awesome. Is that the best way to test for mercury toxicity is your hair? Yes, because the blood is simply a snapshot. If you get mercury into your body, it's, it gets into your blood, okay? And then within four days, it's going to be distributed into your tissues from your blood. And so from there, if you're not excreting it quickly, then the body's going to take the mercury out of your blood and put it into your tissues. It's going to be 80% in the kidneys, 10 to 15% in the liver, and 5 to 10% in the brain. And so that's what happens. So you can't say, well, I'll just get a blood test, check it out. No, 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 no. You have to get a hair test. A hair test is a record of mercury input into your body over a couple of weeks. And so that gives you an idea of how much mercury you have in your body, number one, not, and number two, uh, whether or not you're mineral deficient. And if you're high in mercury, you're definitely deficient in some minerals. And it's based on the metabolism. And that's a, that's a long story, but safe to say that hair analysis is the cheapest, most effective way. Now in the United States, they've developed new technologies and new machines, but I live in old school Panama and we don't even have, I can't even get a blood test for mercury. However, you can take a hair sample and send it into the United States and they'll be happy to process your hair and tell you how much mercury you have for about 50 bucks. It's pretty good. Where do you send that? You just send it trace elements in Texas. That's, that's a good one. Okay. Okay, so I'll pick up uh, where I left off on the presentation. So this slide is Mercury and Arctic Wildlife. This is from 2009. It's a classic graph. And all we're showing here is that, well, we looked at a bunch of different uh, organic uh, matter that belongs, once belonged to animals such as teeth and feathers and hair and so on. And we looked at mercury concentrations over time. Well, if we go from the period of 1200 and the bottom uh, axis here is the year, to the period of 1200 up to 2000, uh, we see a big change here at about 1850. Lo and behold, there you go. There's your uh, California gold rush. It dumps an absolute ton of mercury into the environment because they're burning off the mercury to get the gold. And then it shoots way up here, up to the year 2000. So these poor animals suffer unbelievable amounts of problems because of the input of mercury. And we'll still see this time and time again. Now, the big thing that's happening in the news today, there's 380 long, thin pilot whales that have died in, uh, in Australia. And so what happened? And the news said, well, they took a wrong turn. Hey, they got lost. No, they did not. These things are mercury toxic. Go back into the hundreds of papers that I've read, and you'll find out that whales that beat 
dolphins that beach themselves have mercury levels that are two to 300 times of what you find in, a, in an animal that's, that's not going to strand itself. And how does that happen? What are the differences? Well, it depends on the diet. Some things that the whale and dolphins eat from different areas uh, contain a lot more mercury. If you're a dolphin in the R Indian River County, Florida, boy, you're going to have a lot more mercury than a dolphin from South Carolina. And there's a big research paper on that. If you're a dolphin that lives in the Mediterranean, you're going to have 10 times the amount of mercury than a dolphin that lives out in uh, somewhere in the Atlantic. Or how about the Eastern Pacific? That's a great place that's low in mercury. And so that's why some dolphins are beaching themselves, some aren't. The ones that are beaching are very sick animals and they have really high levels of mercury. And so that's the big story behind the 380 long fin pilot whales. They didn't get lost. They're they're pretty smart uh, mammals. Mammals on the whole are pretty darn smart. And so what they did is the, they just got so much mercury, they became mercury toxic and they beached themselves because they're sick and they're neural, neurally toxic. So sure enough, they have a form of Alzheimer's, if you will, and they don't, they just lose uh, their, their function and ability to navigate. So they die. That's what happens. Bummer. And it's sad. It's really sad. I think six to 8% of the total population died in Australia during that 380 animals beaching themselves. Pretty crazy stuff stuff. Okay, this is one of the graphs I've made. Uh, this is current anthropogenic or man-made sources of mercury emissions. And lo and behold, here you go, artisanal mining. Now, how did that make its way up there? I thought the, the, the mercury mining ended in 1884. Well, it did in the United States. But boy, if you want to get, if you want to kill a bunch of people, what do you do? Hey, just increase the price of gold $2,000 an ounce and everybody's going to run out in the stream. Uh, absolutely. Get your pan. Get out there. Wow. Yeah. If you're in the Amazon, there's lots of gold in the Amazon. Get your pan get out there get your mercury uh kill the environment uh, feed your family well you know it's not so much their fault they're out there looking for work make money uh these indigenous people they have big families you families gotta eat what do you do well i can farm make two cents an hour i can pan for gold and make five bucks a day and so that artisanal mining is the biggest source of mercury into the atmosphere right now and that's part predominantly south america it's china china is a huge offender dumping an absolute ton of mercury into the environment tons and tons and tons every day and where else uh, ecuador for sure uh places like the philippines is one of the absolute biggest offenders and then you'll see coal burning and that's predominantly India and China. We're going to look at a graph of that and the rest of it's not much, not much, not much yep. at all. So let's jump ahead and sorry, go ahead. Can you tell our, our audience what the, um, what this does to you? How do you, you know, what does that make you feel like? How do you know or what will yeah. you question whether you have, you know, high okay. levels? Mercury yeah, it's it's not that easy because there's so many symptoms of mercury toxicity. And we're going to look at a slide quick, a little different than what you looked at, that, uh, that the three stages, but it's pretty much the same. And what happens with acute toxicity, if you're a, a miner and you're breathing in a lot of mercury fumes from the burning off your, your gold there, burning off the mercury from your gold, you're going to get some acute symptoms of mercury toxicity, and that's going to be everything from salivation, uh, sinusitis, horrible sinusitis, uh, tremors, problems thinking, uh, insomnia, and you'll even become crazy. Now, the first time anybody ever became mercury toxic that everybody knew about was the Mad Hatter. And this poor guy was using mercury nitrate to clean and, and condition materials to make hats, and that was in Europe, 1850. And so Alice in Wonderland picked it up. Now, back in the day, if you wanted to say somebody was crazy, oh, that guy's crazy. Crazy. They didn't say crazy or loony or bananas. They said, oh, that guy's mad as a hatter. Oh, he's mad as a hatter. That meant you were really nuts because the, the hatters that used mercury were crazy. So if you're going crazy and you're an artisanal miner, yeah, that's mercury. And you'll have the shakes and you'll be, you'll, you'll really go, you'll kill, you'll die. You'll die. And then, and didn't the, the hat people, the manufacturers, I think in your book, you said that within about six years, they would die from that. Absolutely, because, you know, as Dr. Jane Hightower said, mercury stays in your body forever. And what they mean by that is it attaches the sulfur on protein. So it's going to attach, you know, the hemoglobin molecule has like six, four, la four areas of where, the, where the mercury will attach the sulfur. Once the mercury attaches the hemoglobin, uh, the sulfur on the hemoglobin, it renders it ineffective for oxygen transport. So you're going to be tired. You're going to have an inability to have any stamina when you work out or when you 
when you do hard work. And you know, that's mercury toxicity. And you can couple that with the coronavirus, which already creates lung inflammation and all kinds of problems. And yeah, it's a, it's a heck of a scenario. That's all, all these things that are killing people. But yeah, the Mad Hatter sure did die. He was done for once he started breathing in mercury because hundred percent of that mercury goes through into the blood, passes into the brain, causes neural toxicity or um, symptoms of Parkinson, Alzheimer's and nuts. You'll go nuts. You'll go crazy and you'll die. It's sad, but that's the way it happened. Sure. You know, it's interesting because I've been talking with Dr. Stephanie Sinef recently, and she's a senior researcher at MIT. Uh -huh. and she's been studying the fact, uh, the, the way that people have been dying in highly polluted areas like New yes. York City, like in right. uh, Italy and places like that. And so the 5G mm -hmm. apparently affects you worse in areas that are highly polluted and that's from her study. But then if that pollution is also high in this mercury mm -hmm. that would prevent your body from being able to take in the oxygen, because right. all of these autopsies in Europe where they autopsied the COVID people who supposedly died of COVID, right. they found absolutely no virus, but they found thrombosis in the, in, of the blood where it's just coagulated, where it wasn't able to take in oxygen. Right. And so the doctors uh, who have created these alliances worldwide who are leading a fight against um, whoever's leading this COVID hoax. Right. Uh, uh, you know, they're, they're saying that this is um, really an, a, a result of this 5G being rolled out in the last six to seven months. Mm -hmm. But then this high mercury uh, poisoning, I think, coincides with all of this because yeah. it makes the oxygen not be able to be taken in by your blood. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this is all really important information for people to know because they need to boost their immune system and they need to get this mercury out of their body so that this won't affect them so much. Right. Absolutely. Like I said, uh, there's research papers, which I've read and presented in my YouTube videos that state implicitly uh, that uh, the 5G will reduce iron levels in the blood and the effectiveness of hemoglobin. And so you'll just have less oxygen. And that's one of the big things happening. And then they say that the people die from coronavirus from basically oxygen deprivation. And sure enough, that's uh, affecting uh, the, the hemoglobin molecule. And also mercury does the same thing. So you have 5G and the mercury uh, working uh, synergistically to, to produce problems uh, with oxygen. And so that's uh, you know, a big part of the story of what's going on. And in addition to that, there's other toxicities. Anytime you live in a city, uh, you're going to have much higher mercury than any other places. And that's just because anytime you have more people, you're going to have more mercury, even from mercury amalgam fillings or, you know, eating carnivorous fish and so on. So that's, that's uh, the double whammy is the, the mercury uh, and the 5G. And you, wherever you have 5G was first installed, you're going to have the highest levels of the coronavirus infections. So, and there's definitely a big correlation there. There, I did a video on that as well, but uh, we'll get back to these slides. Uh, mercury stored emissions. So this came from uh, two research papers in scientific journals, and I put them both together. They basically said the same thing. This is where your mercury is stored. And a lot of people wouldn't know this, but mo half of it's stored in the ocean. Uh, the things that we're interested in, 7% in the forest. Now, the forests around San Francisco Bay are one of the biggest biological sources of mercury in the planet. And that's from the uh, the, the mercury mining AT and the California gold rush. Um, and there was, there's 200 mercury mines in California easily. So all of these forests that are burning, you can see right here in the literature, they'll tell you forests are a big source of mercury. So if you burn out those forests, that uh, mercury goes directly into the atmosphere. And people are commenting on, on some of my YouTube videos and saying, look, uh, we're getting so sick. We're developing arrhythmias, insomnia, uh, nausea. And these are acute symptoms of mercury toxicity. And so, yeah, those that's the mercury being burned off from the forest and making people sick. So the forests, there, there you're burning that off. Uh, in, in regards to the, the deserts, this is in crazy stuff, but 10% of all the mercury is stored in the desert. And what happens is when it floods, like it is now with the rain all over the place, you know, China is experiencing continual floods. Here in Panama, we're getting a meter of rain every six weeks. It's two to three times more than normal. And so when the rains get into these deserts, like they are, like explained in one of my videos, uh, there's six times the release of mercury. So we're getting the mercury from the ocean fish. We're getting it from the desert. We're getting it from the forest, especially around San Francisco Bay Area. I, I feel so bad for those people. I'm trying to help them answering all their questions that they have about how to get rid of the mercury. And so 
uh, what happens is all these sources are, are, are letting loose now and it's just the perfect storm for mercury. And now, you know, you'll get these crazy th symptoms from coronavirus. Oh, well, there's skin inflammation and there's arterial inflammation. And oh, oh, by the way, there's forgetfulness. There you go. That's a lung virus. And I said, what? What? There's forgetfulness? Oh, yeah. People come, become forgetful and demented uh, from a lung virus. And I thought, well, no, that's mercury toxicity. That's neural inflammation, forgetfulness, uh, and so on. And all these symptoms that they're coming up with, including my, my personal favorite, kidney disease. Oh, yes, the lung, all kinds of lung viruses. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, they cause kidney disease. Okay, sure, big toe disease and all this other junk. Look, 80% of all the mercury in your body is stored in the kidney. The kidneys are shutting down and they experience inflammation because of mercury. Okay, let's let's get on with some of the truth here instead of the, the whole ton of BS the media is putting out that it's, you know, the lung virus is killing your kidneys. I don't buy, I just don't buy any of that. It's just nonsense. Well, I think also, a Part of this problem is the stupid mask wearing that they're telling people to do. That oh, that's the other one. Yeah, right, right. And irreversible brain damage. And, and it's just, um, you know, I think a lot of the, the forgetfulness and the not being able to think is them having a lack of oxygen in their body. Absolutely. And you, you, yeah, you they, add that to the 5G and the mercury that's in yes. And That's oxygen in your blood, and it looks mm -hmm. to me like they're just trying to, you know, cut down on the population, which is right. This is right out of the Georgia Guidestones. Look, look that up for a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, they're pretty open about what they want to do and they kill as many people as they can. So wearing the mask, absolutely. Take a look at the research. When you're wearing a mask, you're taking in more carbon dioxide. Uh, you're decreasing the amount of oxygen in your body. And yeah, it can make you stupid. It can make you feel lightheaded and so on. So that's the triple whammy. 5G mercury and wearing a mask and you got to wear your mask. Here in Panama, you can't get into a store without a mask. People are running with masks. People are playing basketball with masks. People are riding bikes with masks on. Uh, you, you, in your car, you're supposed to wear a mask. I don't. I'm, you know, I've killed uh, the, the coronavirus many times with the Rife technology I have here. It's kind of a joke for me with people that are afraid and wear masks. I just look at them. I feel sorry for them because they listen to major media. They're confused about everything. They're scared. It's a fear-based disease. Corona is a fear-based disease. You don't have the fear. You don't wear the mask. You don't have the disease. You have to be afraid. To, oh my God, wear your mask. Code yellow. Get in a karate stance. Oh my God, jump up and down. Do something. Look, it's uh, it's all a, bologna, a bunch of baloney. Uh, it's based on pre-existing conditions and, oh, you know, if you die of a heart attack or a car accident, you automatically have coronavirus. And I believe me, I've seen and heard firsthand accounts of this directly, and it's something else. Uh, it's just something else. Okay, so I'll get back into these slides. Um, okay, we talk about the three rules, my favorite three rules. How do I avoid mercury? I want to eat seafood, yummy, yummy. Okay, easy enough. The smaller the seafood items, scallops, shrimp, clams, oysters, uh, the less mercury. Okay, the larger the, the seafood item, shark, swordfish, tuna, the, the more mercury. Rule, that's rule number one, eat small. Rule number two, uh, eat something that feeds low in the food, food chain. Scallops, shrimp, clams, oysters, well, they eat algae, right? So that's low on the food chain. They have less mercury because, well, let's face it, uh, plankton doesn't have much mercury, but if you're eating a, a fish that eats another fish, a fish has, oh, 10 times the mercury than, than the plankton does. So the second thing is eat low on the food chain. Eat more stuff that eats plants rather than eat eating fish. You see the swordfish, shark, tuna. Hey, these are heavy carnivores. They eat nothing but other meat that contains uh, uh, 10 to 100 times more mercury. And rule number three is be careful where you get your seafood. Uh, let's see areas such as in River County, Florida, the Mediterranean, San Francisco Bay. Ask the San Francisco's how they like their seafood in the San Francisco Bay. And they say, oh my God, we don't eat it. We know it's toxic and mercury. Well, that's those are the three areas, right? Uh, Mediterranean, even any landlocked uh, area of water is going to have higher mercury. And I remember as a kid, there was uh, man-made lakes where they'd say, hey, don't eat fish out of there more than once a month. The first time I heard that was like 10 years old because it contains mercury. Don't eat more fish more than once a month out of there. It's bad for you. And so be careful where you get your seafood. Do not eat anything from China because it, the whole country is full of mercury. I'm going to show you that in a second. But those are three rules. Smaller is better. Uh, lower on the food chain is better. And be careful where you get your seafood. Don't eat anything out of China or San Francisco Bay, Mediterranean, or even India River County. It's dangerous stuff. Okay, um, go ahead. And I'm trying to remember if this is something I learned from you, but Mm -hmm. and, you know a lot of people need those minerals and so they are eating salt that is mineral rich or they think it's mineral yeah. rich and if the salt uh -huh. if the salt is taken from the present day polluted ocean 
Um, I believe that salt contains high levels of this mercury. And uh, I, it, I understood it, it from, from someone that a person who didn't eat any fish had high mercury toxicity and they were eating uh, like Mediterranean sea salt. And uh, it's an interesting point. The salt itself would likely have to contain some sulfur, some sulfur compounds, and it would certainly contain mercury. Um, that's a good one. I haven't even considered that, but absolutely, I would be careful where I would get anything, any kind of food from the Mediterranean Ocean or China or places like that because they just have higher levels of mercury in the environment. Uh, you know, I'd really have to look into that salt thing. That's fascinating, but it would have to contain some sulfur. And of course, uh, 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 ocean does contain sulfur. The sulfate molecule is, I think, the sixth biggest, the sixth most common ion in salt water is sulfate. So yeah, it contains sulfur. And yeah, the mercury will attach to the sulfur in the sea salt. So I'm dying to look that up. I, I haven't even heard of that one. So there you go. There's another video idea. Where to go? <laughs> So I'm just going to say real quickly, um, a salt that I would recommend is one that's mined salt, like sure. the Bolivian rose salt, uh, or there's a, a mine up in Utah. And those are old oceans that were sealed mm -hmm. off because of volcanic mm -hmm. activity or something like that. And it was before pollution. There were more minerals in that salt. And I think it's safer. So that's what, what I recommend using. Right, the Himalayan sea salt's another one. Okay, so current mercury emissions, this is right out of the EPA. And you'll just see, look where China is, okay, look where India is. Oh boy, that's 80% uh, of all your mercury in the world's coming from these areas. They do a ton of artisanal mining. The Philippines is a really bad one here. Uh, and China just uses a ton of mercury in industry and, and their weapons manufacturing, the whole dang bit. You know, use anything you want in China and destroy anything you want. That's, anything goes, we don't have any environmental protection whatsoever in China. Do everything you want, kill the world, who cares? As long as we get to make everything and destroy everything we want. Okay, look, at there's the proof right there, China. India is the second biggest one. Uh, here, th all this is from artisanal mining right here. There's your Amazon, okay? There's your Ecuador, there's your Colombia, there's your mercury mining, uh, gold mining using mercury. United States, ah, you know, around the industry, higher populations. Mexico, yeah, industry, uh, not so much artisanal mining, but definitely uh, industry there. So there is your proof of the mercury emissions from industry and artisanal mining. Okay, what else? Uh, okay, here's the symptoms we talked about. Now, this is very similar to the three stages you talked about uh, previously. You know, the first stages would be uh, fatigue. Uh, you would probably have problems with sinuses and so on. Probably digestive or disorders could be that. Irritability and depression are some of the early symptoms as well. Uh, headaches, skin problems. Well, you know, this looks like almost, well, looky, have a looky-loo here. This looks like you have a coronavirus. Urinary and kidney disorder disorders, uh, skin problems. Well, there you go. There's your Kawasaki. There's your kidney. What else? Uh, fatigue. Uh, well, yeah, people have the coronavirus have uh, fatigue. Uh, what else? Sinus infections. Well, learning difficulties. <laughs> there's your, uh, there's your uh, dementia and your memory loss. Well, the people that have the corona have the memory loss. Okay, a lung virus? I, I guess so, right? Well, likely they have uh, all kinds of inflammation from other toxicities, and it could even be um, some of the pesticides and herbicides sides. You know, glyphosate's in every single major water body in just about the entire planet. They use it here by the thousands of tons here in Panama. And they say there's no such thing as organic in Panama because of the amount of glyphosate. Well, maybe in my pools of my shrimp, but that's about it. But if anything on the land, uh, they're going to use glyphosate unless specifically you're looking for organic and you know the farmer and he's not using that. So it's the problems of identifying mercury toxicity. is just, it's so many different symptoms. Hair analysis is the way to go. It's easy and fast and cheap. And uh, the, there's just, uh, wow. And if you get really into acute, acute mercury disorders, you're going to get into shaking and learning difficulties and have problems walking and talking. The ear, one of them, or I know so many people have like ringing in their ears and they... And Absolutely. Yeah, tinnitus and... Uh, uh, dizziness is uh, one of the more advanced forms of serious mercury toxicity is that dizziness and tinnitus. And I know lots of people suffer from that. And it could be caused by radiation too. That's another thing I've run into with some of my clients. Well, I think that glyphosate also, uh, it's a mineral chelator and it uh, causes leaky gut. And I think it escorts mercury in across that blood brain barrier and makes it even oh. more toxic. And it 
And uh, I think the glutathione that you mentioned earlier is uh, helpful in trying to detoxify from that. Right, right. So liposomal glutathione will help you detox. And of course, taking antioxidants will boost glutathione level, levels and turn on uh, the, uh, the enzymes responsible for the transport of, of the heavy metals. And that's what they call the uptake. The uptake is just getting your genes to produce more glutathione. And that's from uh, increasing antioxidants in a better diet and reduce stress. You'll produce more glutathione. Uh, and then you'll be able to chelate heavy metals. The classic example is the Minimata. Uh, not everybody got sick in the Minimata uh, disaster where there was industry dumping mercury into the Minimata Bay of Japan. And people started getting sick in the 50s and 60s. And by the 1970s, they just come out and said, well, look, this is what happened. We dumped a ton of mercury into the, uh, uh, into the uh, ocean, into the bay, and people started getting sick from eating the fish. Well, there's some people that didn't get sick at all, and they ate the fish all the time. And that's just because 30% of the people are poor detoxifiers because they don't make enough glutathione. Well, 30, another 30% will be okay, and then 30% will will excrete the mercury really fast and they will get sick. And who covers this a lot, but Dr. Chris Shade on the YouTube. And, and that's, that's, that's a big story there about, uh, about uh, staying well is being able to excrete that mercury as soon as it comes in your body. It's a regular everyday thing. Absolutely. And I think that glyphosate um, is a part of this whole thing. And uh, it is so pervasive. It's now in our rainwater and it's hard to avoid it even even because of that it's even on organic foods and yep. uh, i think unfiltered unpasteurized raw apple cider vinegar a little bit every day with some water can help detoxify your liver and, and, and help you with that but i think also the liposomal vitamin c mm -hmm. is a, a really great thing to add to your diet to help mm -hmm. Uh, boost your immune system and mm -hmm. um, and detoxify as well, and um, so I think that's an important important thing for people to know. Um, maybe just eating a whole piece of organic fruit every day can can yeah. possibly help you with that. But I like the liposomal as well um, as the liposomal uh, glutathione. Yeah, absolutely. Apple cider vinegar first thing in the morning is a great uh, cleanse for the kidneys and the liver. And I've had people who have reduced, uh, women who have reduced fibroids, uh, breast and uh, uterine fibroids by just using apple cider vinegar and lemon water first thing in the morning every single day. And together with Rife Technology, I was able to reduce fibroids down to just about nothing through the ultrasound. So absolutely, I'm a big fan. Apple cider vinegar is one of the few uh, detox remedies for glyphosate. It will break it down and, and help remove it from the body. So yeah, I'm a big fan of that. It's also rich in minerals. Go figure, right? And it's, it's, a, it's a probiotic, so it's got the good bacteria in it because it's a fermented food. And so mm -hmm. it's going to you know, help support your immune system in that way as well. And since mm -hmm. the glyphosate destroys the, the good bacteria in the soil, so it's not in the food, right. that's something that we need to uh, get into our body every day to, to help build that up. Right. And like you said, it's an everyday thing. It's not something, well, I'll detox for a week and then never worry about it. No, I think it's an everyday thing that you're going to have to be conscious of. Okay. I'm going to try to get through the rest of these slides. Uh, this is just the increase in global emissions, uh, increasing steadily from 1970 to up to the uh, current uh, year. And that coincides with the death rate of Parkinson's disease and of ALS, amyotropic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease has increased linearly over time from 1972. And this is mercury toxicity you can heal yourself from Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and ALS, but it's it would have to be um, through detox, aggressive detox therapies. Your infrared saunas, your increase in glutathione, your antioxidants, uh, and your intestinal binders. Okay, so that's um, that's all the slides I have. That's my company, Panama Fresh Organic. Uh, I think we're the first in the world to have organic seafood where the, the diet of the seafood that we grow is predominantly algae. And so it's naturally anti-inflammatory. It's high in omega-3s. And so that's the big thing there. We're doing very well. I'm getting new clients every time we have a harvest and we sell directly to the clients here in Boquete, Panama, and they love it. I mean, I get nothing but amazing comments back. So the, the, my company is growing slow, but sure. Even in amongst the lockdown, we're still locked down uh, for the weekends. We just got out Saturday. 
Thank you. Thank you, Warden. And uh, we not allowed out during the night. So, <laughs> so it's better than being allowed only two hours a day. So we're, we're still under partial lockdown. And you have to wear your mask or you'll get yelled at or thrown out of a, uh, um, a, a supermarket. You, the restaurants aren't really open yet. <laughs> Are y'all having the protests like everyone is having all over the world? They're in Thailand. They're in, I mean, Costa Rica has got huge protests going on and the police are siding with the people. But, um, wow. you know, what is it like in Panama for you? I, we don't have any protests. Uh, as, a, as a resident, you're not allowed to protest <laughs> specifically you don't have that right to protest so and the people in Cherokee province are pretty complacent they're they wear all their masks they wear their mask uh, while they're walking on the street uh, they everybody has a mask on everybody everywhere has a mask I don't I don't wear it in the street I don't wear it anywhere except where I have to and that's inside a supermarket if you get caught wearing not having your mask in the supermarket the manager will come out yell at you and pull you out of the store you'll get thrown out and you won't be allowed in again and they, there will be there will be a big commotion there. You have to have your mask if you enter any store. And they still have hand washing at the door. And they still point that thermometer at your head and take your temperature all the time. So people are pretty, pretty well brainwashed here into believing that the coronavirus is we're all going to die. Hurry up, do something, get in a crowded stance, cold yellow, and wear your mask. Wear your mask, we're all going to die. So you'll see people running on the road with the mask and playing basketball on the court with the mask, and. You know, I, I think in Panama City, it's a lot different, but this is really the, the fruit bowl of Panama. And we're mostly farmers here and, and we're complacent. We're, we do everything we're told, basically, you bet. Um, well, I'm gonna put some links down below this video for people to click on if they wanna find out more facts and truth on uh, mask wearing, on this COVID thing, on the uh, Doctors International Alliance that is uh, really holding hearings about uh, the false information that's being put out to the public. And also, I, I want to mention that Bill can help people around the world start their own uh, water system where they can farm mercury-free fish. Aren't you still doing that or able to do that? Maybe you can do it by Zoom if you have to, but um, um, yeah, I being an advisor. Yes, I can. Uh, actually, it's a good thing you brought that up. I almost forgot. November 3rd stop, starts the next uh, class, which I teach called Basics of Aquaculture. And then it's organically based. And so I begin with, you know, teaching everybody all the important things to learn about aquaculture and how to do it uh, sustainably and environmentally friendly and all that. And that starts November 3rd. You can look on my website to find out information and contact me there. It's www newaquatechpanama.com or just put in Dr. Bill McGraw aquaculture and all my sites that come up. PanamaFreshOrganic.com is another one. And then you get to read all of my articles that I publish regularly and see my YouTube videos and my interviews uh, with mer about mercury toxicity and about organic farming and about shrimp viruses and all that other fun stuff. So yeah, my class begins in just a couple weeks. I'm teaching one currently. It's going to last until December 18th. It's for more of a younger crowd and the older crowd, the more intense stuff is going to start November 3rd. And I think I've got about uh i got about probably eight or ten people that have signed up so it's going to be a fun course it's a blast the amount of information you learn is just unreal it really is that's great and i do recommend his book mercury the ultimate truth and chronic disease it's excellent information and it's indexed so it's easy to reference things and and look things up and um also there's a uh, more information below that I will put for you to, to click on if you want to investigate any more of this. And I'll also put Dr. McGraw's uh, link down there. So uh, thank you so much for joining me today, Dr. McGraw. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for having me, Nancy. It's always a, uh, a lot of fun for me to, to have a talk with you and uh, discuss so many things. We sure do pack it in, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and um, I hope you'll be on one of my shows again soon and and we'll we'll take this uh, a step further. Yeah, I, I can't wait for the next one. It, it's always it's always fun. All right. Thank you. All right. Signing off. OK, thanks very much. See you. See you again soon. Bye bye. I don't see where to stop the recording. Here it is. Yeah, it just says um, stop recording.